This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Fire Chief Shofi with me, Trevor Shofi from the Perth uh, Fire Department. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. This has been a few weeks and us trying to get here between uh, we had an air conditioner that needed to be fixed here and then you got called out one time. But like we say, the fourth time is the charm and you're here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're here to talk about the uh, Perth Fire Dogs Youth Initiatives. Can you tell the folks what that is? Well, it's, it's something that sort of evolved over time and um, they sort of backtrack a little bit. Uh, the fire department has a firefighters association and back in 2012, around there, the Perth police disbanded and went to the OPP. Um, and they used to run a golf tournament for years and, and they paid for public skating and public swimming uh, for residents in town or for anyone really that wanted to use the pool or the arena. Um, and when they left, they said, you know what, we can't run this tournament anymore. Would the Firefighters Association like to take it on? And I thought, sure, that would, that's a great idea. So uh, about 10 years ago, we, we took that on and um, the first year we ran it, we raised about $10,000. And at that time, the cost for skating and swimming was about $6,000. So like, perfect, we, we have enough to pay for the program for the year. Um, we keep those, those activities going and then we've got this extra money. Now, what do we do with it? And I got thinking, well, you know, my, my kids were small at the time. I think they were four and six and, and they, um, they were playing ball hockey in Smith Falls. And I'm like, well, we drive past the rink to go to Smith Falls to play, you know, why don't we try to do it here? So we, we started the, this fire dogs thing and my friend's an illustrator and he, you know, got some t-shirts and thought, well, how much would it cost? We'll probably get 40 to 50 kids and they'll come down and we'll rent the rink and away we go. Well, um, I had to go back to protocol. I think four times that year because registrations just kept coming in and coming in. What we thought we'd have 40 or 50 kids, we ended up with 170 the first year. And we thought, okay, well, this is great. We, we had about seven or eight weeks and, and kids came in and had a great time and they ran around and they were sweating and they got these cool shirts and siblings would start playing because they'd see, well, I want one of those shirts too. And it sort of grew from there. Well, the next year we had it, we had 288 kids. So it's, it grew exponentially. And then from there, we sort of went out and we did, you know, we're still paying for the skating and swimming. Um, then we started getting grants. So uh, the Rotary has helped us out a bunch. Uh, Jumpstart and Canadian Tire has helped us out a bunch. Um, so we've been able to do different programs. We had basketball one year. So same thing, it was at the Perth Arena. We moved the hockey nets out, put some basketball nets in and, and the kids just played. Um, they all got some cool shirts. Uh, we've done some lacrosse sessions. Uh, we've done a lot of fitness stuff. So we did fitness for, for sort of tween teen girls specifically. And then we did some um, co-ed fitness. Uh, we've done golf program for several years. Um, we have, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we do, we try to do with Canadian Tire. So we, um, we got a whole bunch of golf clubs at the Perth course. And now we've got some at Maple View. So if any um, child wants to try golf, they can just ask for a set of clubs and they get those clubs free of charge. Um, so, and then those programs, you know, we've been sort of running on and off, obviously the pandemic sort of slowed down the, the bigger groups we're able to have, but we also sort of switched our focus to a few more concrete structures, sort of anytime play-based. So the, uh, the bike park in town, uh, we were able to donate 50,000 to it. And we sort of organized uh, running that. So the, the town paid for 50,000, we raised the other 50,000. So we got a pretty cool bike park in town, a uh, little pump track there. Um, with Rotary's help and Jumpstart again, we've been able to upgrade the nets at Conlon Farms. So we've got four new basketball nets in there. Um, and then, you know, just last year, we were able to put together a, an outdoor sports board. So we got boards and a nice pad. So we had a really good ice surface for the year. Uh, and now, you know, it can be used as ball hockey or, or basketball or whatever you want. It's a cool pad out there. We're still kind of working on it to try to get a roof on it, you know, to keep it a little more usable when it's raining and, and keep the ice in longer, I guess, in the, in the winter as well. So when, when you say we to, <clears throat> excuse me, is it is it the Perth Fire Dogs or is it your fire department? Yeah, and, and the, the Fire Dogs are sort of a branch of the Firefighters Association. Um, so the association kind of looks after the tournament, but all the funds raised there go towards the Fire Dogs program. Um, and sort of, they're sort of two different things in a way, but they're kind of the same. Um, different in a way that any funds raised that's for the fire dogs has to go towards youth initiatives. 
Um, so it's, it's, um, you know, which the nice thing is, is, you know, we had kid fish in the weekend. So we helped mm -hmm. kid fish. We helped with prizes and we helped with, uh, support. So the association had members that enjoy fishing to come out and help. Um, but then when we have ball hockey, we have different members that like doing that. So it's kind of nice because they can take part in the events that they like to do, and they don't necessarily have to do the ones that they're necessarily keen on. Well, you've provided a variety of sports too for, for children. So that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, kids need something to do and yes. so do I. So, um, <laughs> so lessons to be learned with sport and, you know, it carries over into life. So I found if you can keep the kids busy, you give them something to do, they'll, they'll do it, right? That's right. That's right. Now, do you have uh, equipment there for, for people to, to get for their children as well? Uh, we have had uh, at times, like we do have, obviously with the golf, we, we sort of keep them at the golf courses. Um, you know, at the, the pad out back, there's some basketballs and there's the nets and, and ball hockey stuff as well. Um, when we run the programs, we have equipment available for anyone that needs it. So in ball hockey, we'll give you a stick and helmet and gloves if you need it, uh, that kind of stuff. And then we sort of have a little bit of uh, room as well. If someone was looking for something like through COVID, we had uh, we had offered some stuff. If you need something like a, a baseball glove or a, a soccer net or something, then we try to get that um, and a bike. You know, we get a few of those out as well, trying to just get things into kids' hands, right? That's right. That's right. Now, I saw you at the, the Perth Festival of the Maples as well, too. You had a little the area set up and it was, I, I believe, some of your firefighters along with you. And it was uh, wearing the, the uniforms and, and trying to go through a, a, a course. Yeah, we had, uh, and that was sort of a, a department and association type thing. We had sort of two different areas there. We had that area was a nice uh, junior firefighter uh, skills challenge. So they could get dressed up and try to be a firefighter for a day type thing. And then the other side, we had a little fire dogs area where we had some, you know, some lacrosse sticks and ball hockey stuff in the back of that. Oh, okay. I saw the lacrosse too. I didn't realize that was you, you as well too. So that's excellent. Yeah. The, the yeah. children were having a great time with that. Oh yeah, yeah. it was uh, uh, one of our members uh, designed the course, and it was it was a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Now, to learn more about the Perth Fire Dogs the Youth Initiatives, how do they get a hold of you? Um, so, social media is sort of the the one way. Is uh, you know we have the Perth Fire Dogs group or the Perth Fire Dogs Youth Initiatives. Uh, if you don't have social media, um, you can email Perth Fire Dogs. It's D A W G S at gmail.com uh, and then you can always call the, the station uh, the number is 613-267-5574 and uh, we'll be glad to help you out. Excellent, excellent. Now while we have you here can you give us uh, just some maybe some fire safety tips on bonfires and barbecues going on? It's that time of year. <laughs> yeah well bonfires hopefully nobody's having them in the town of Perth because we uh, there's a bylaw that restricts that um, but um, definitely for barbecues, um, always uh, look where you cook, right? So um, it's uh, far too often we sort of get busy and trying to do too many different things and we get distracted and kind of, oh, that's where we run into some trouble with the barbecues and if they're not clean. Um, so if they've got a lot of uh, stuff built up on it, make sure you get it clean before you try to use it because it can get out of hand quickly. Um, and then as for bonfires, you know, um, always check with your local municipality and what, what you can and can't do. Um, for the town of Perth, it's mostly smoke generation that's, that's an issue. Um, most people are pretty good, so yeah. I like that. Look where you cook. I, I have seen some incidences where there's some melted siding on somebody's house before and it's like... Yeah, it's, uh, it can get out of hand quickly, so. It can, for sure, for sure. Well, thank you very much for joining us today.